Hi, this is Jim from RV4x40.com. This week we're going to talk about ways to display data, and this applies particularly for diesel pusher motorhomes or probably any diesel powered heavy track uh, chassis type of RV. It could be a Super C or a Class A. Uh, it does not apply particularly to gas vehicles or to diesel pickups, but I thought you might be interested in, in learning something about ways to display data while you're driving down the road. Welcome to the channel, Jim from RV4x40.com. And if you noticed, last week we did not get a video uh, published. We had an interesting week, actually somewhat trying week, and we're not going to cover that in too much detail, but we'll come back and cover that in a later video. But uh, we had a lot of things going on, and as a result, we didn't uh, have time to actually publish anything to get a video processed. One of the things that I liked on my previous motorhome was it had an in-dash display that would pick up certain data from the data bus uh, in the motorhome and display it where you can see it. If you're not familiar with that type of thing, then uh, cars have it, uh, trucks have it. Pretty much all vehicles these days uh, have a large number of uh, microcontrollers on them that do various things from running the engine, running the transmission, running the entertainment system, all kinds of things. And a lot of that data is transmitted around the vehicle on what's called a data bus. And it's simply a wire connection between various devices and they communicate back and forth electronically. And that data is made available if you want to tap into it. If you're familiar with the OBD2 port on your car, it's a connector that the mechanics can plug into. Pull up error message, other data off the system to know what's going on. Heavy trucks have a similar uh, system in them with a different set of specs. And there's a nine pin circular connector typically used. Older vehicles might have a six pin connector, but either way, there are data buses that have an awful lot of information that's transmitted around. Much of what you have on your dashboard actually comes from that data bus, but you also can tap into it for the diagnostics and error messages, but there's a great deal of information just driving down the road. And so I like that display on the previous coach, and one of the things I wanted to do was find a way to do it on this one. There are a couple of systems out there that I'm familiar with. Uh, one of them is uh, VSpoc, I think is the name of it. And the other one is Bluefire. Bluefire comes in versions for motorhomes as well as for heavy duty trucks. So we picked up the Bluefire for motorhomes uh, device and uh, used an Android tablet to get some programming done so we could look at things that I wanted to see driving down the road. And we're gonna go through that in some level of detail and show you the screens and show you a little bit of the things you can do. It's not an exhaustive how to do it, but it will give you some information uh, for how we use it. We're looking at the Blue Fire for Motorhomes dashboard. This is one that I use, and uh, this is actually using the CAN data as opposed to the live data from the engine. Uh, it's an easier thing to do because it actually shows some numbers, and we'll kind of walk through uh, what's on this screen. Uh, there are a lot of options, of course, when you set it up. And uh, the home screen up here basically takes you back to one of the uh, management screens. You can do that. You can also uh, look at all the different options you have when running Blue Fire. There's a trip set up, uh, various other things. I'm not going to go through all the details about it, uh, but this is what you get to. The main one you would end up opening is going to be the dash. So we'll double click on that. It will load the last dash. Shows you everything coming up. There are some warnings coming up due to the way the data is being imported. Uh, I have these set up to for alerts to display for 10 seconds and then they'll disappear. 
the transmission temperature, which is one of the warnings that came up, is not actually out of spec. I'm not sure why it said that. It's at 200 degrees. But these are the ones I chose uh, to put on the dash, and you can put them in. You can put most of the items in either as a graphic indicator, graphic indicator with or without a digital readout below it. In uh, this particular one, there's no units on it. That is the speed of the motor home at the time in miles per hour. And uh, you can see the ones I have here. Uh, they're the ones I felt were the most important to monitor. In particular, I like having the, uh, the digital display, and I have considered just going to an all uh, numbers display as opposed to any of the graphics, but they're easier to see the graphics at a glance. But if you want to know the exact number, which can be important uh, on the temperatures. In, in particular, I have found that the coolant temperature is one that you may need to watch depending upon the load on the engine and how well the cooling system is working, and altitude and a whole bunch of other parameters. That's one on a previous motorhome I had problems with overheating going up hills until we got the radiator really clean and that took care of that. But I like to watch this number as well as where it uh, is on the gauge. Of course, the dash gauges don't have anything on them of much way of numbers. So they're not they're not terribly useful. Uh, boost pressure is a good one to watch because on a turbo diesel it tells you how well the turbo is working. You get used to seeing where it is as a as a maximum reading, and then from that you can tell if there's an issue developing with the uh, turbocharger. I like to watch the gears over here just for information purposes, particularly going down a hill to know what gear it wants to be in and and what gear it's actually able to select when the uh, exhaust brake is working. Cruise setting and miles per gallon are, are useful. Uh, this is a clearly not accurate number for a diesel motorhome uh, at 51 miles per gallon unless you're just totally going downhill. And there's a trip distance, distance to empty, which is the way I like to look at fuel. The def reading, which can be important. You never want to run out of def with one of these things. And then the actual fuel reading. A gauge like this is more accurate on uh, fuel remaining than the dashboard gauge is going to be. Gives you a much better indication of it. The load is an eh, information kind of thing that tells you what it is going. To change the dashboard, uh, the way it's set up, and you can edit these and then save them yourself. And, and there are various ones available on the Blue Fire uh, website you can download to start with. But if you double click or double tap in the case of a tablet on there, it will bring up a screen which allows you to do various things. You can manipulate the text gauges and the graphic gauges. You can uh, load a, a template if you want to. There's a simplified dash uh, which is automatically position gauges. You can change the colors of your gauges and the background and all that kind of stuff. You can group things. So once you have a group set up you can move the group uh, as, a, as a block as opposed to individual gauges. You resize the gauges uh, you can you can scroll through through these and see what it is. The snap to grid is if you're uh, setting up uh, gauges and dragging them around, uh, that can be a very useful thing to do. Now, one of the things that you will see here, I can find it, is if the lock all gauges is set, then I can't move anything on the uh, on the dash. So what I'm going to do is unlock the gauges, and we'll kind of show you how we can we can do things. So we'll go and show the dash again. So now that I have the gauge unlocked, if I wanted to move the uh, engine warning icon, for example, I can just grab it and drag it around to wherever I wanted it to go. Move it up over to... Uh, I guess I'm at the top of the gauge. I can't move it up any further, so I can move it over and I can move it down. But that's as far up as it will go. Uh, I can go in and change the gauges, I can change the size, I can do all kinds of editing on the gauges if I choose to do so. Uh, for example, if I click on, on that gauge, and it's going to go uh, pick up and tell me it's the local time gauge. Uh, let's say that I wanted to change the color of that gauge. Go over and I'll change the background, make it prettier, I'll make it yellow and I'll leave the name in blue but now I'm going to change the value and you can also set the uh, the night colors to something different and so we've made the time stand out more 
and the background's covered up a little bit of my box, but uh, you can do that with any of the gauges uh, in terms of how you want to make them show. You can change the color, change the, the uh, text, all those kinds of things. So very quickly, that's what you can do. This is the startup for Blue Fire for Motorhomes. It will initialize the software. The first thing it will try to do is connect to the dongle on the data port. Yeah, it'll take a few seconds. It's Bluetooth, and it's set up to always be allowed to do that, and it will fire up the Bluetooth uh, driver in the dongle. And so I've set it to not start the dash when I first start uh, things up. Just found that more convenient uh, to do it manually, but in order to uh, bring the dash up itself, the little gauge looking icon in the upper right corner and if we tap on that that will start everything up and it's connected now the engine is not running so there is no data uh, actually coming from the engine computer what this is showing is the last data that it had in particular it's got the most recent mile per gallon indication how far we can go on the remaining fuel and I have found the fuel gauges on this type of thing is more accurate than the gauge on the dash tends to be. The last motorhome I had, it was really had a terrible fuel gauge on it. This will not account for any fuel used in the generator, however. It is engine data only, so you will be using slightly more fuel than this if you have the generator running. We find our generator uh, takes about a half a gallon per hour uh, that we're on the road. So it's not a lot, but uh, you have to kind of mentally calibrate how much fuel you're using in the generator if it's running off the same fuel tank. At this point we've stopped for fuel and you can see the fuel is now at 100.0 gallons. If you click on that little uh, pump looking thing down in the bottom right corner that will automatically assume you're going to put 100 gallons in or fill the tank up however that is set in the system. Gives you a chance to change that number. Normally I don't. I go ahead and put 100 gallons in and, and set it up that way. So we're sitting here with the engine at idle. One interesting thing, if you look, it's uh, 8.3 miles per gallon, 100 gallons of fuel, but it's only showing 760 miles to empty. And I am not sure about that. I haven't had a chance to check it with the software developer, but it would seem it should be 830 miles, but, uh, but that is what it is. So at this point, we're out of the fuel stop and pulling out onto the highway. You will see the blazingly fast acceleration of a large vehicle like this if you watch the speedometer in the middle. And uh, top right corner shows the gear that's selected, which would be six gear, and then the current gear as we pick up speed. And you can watch the boost pressure go up and down as we're accelerating, watch the load on the engine go up and down. And uh, gradually we'll get out onto the highway and get up to operational speed and head on down the road. So that is what the gauges look like driving down the road. Gives you a lot of useful information, more detail than you can get in the actual dashboard. And as I've said, you can customize this for totally different information. You can totally duplicate the dashboard. And depending upon the size of your screen, you can add more information or spread it out more. It's strictly up to you how you design it. And it's a very useful tool to give you some auxiliary information that may or may not be readily available on your dashboard. Our goal on this channel has been to provide information about things that we do, uh, problems we've had, sites that we've seen, and hopefully give you some things to think about if you're in a motorhome, either full-time or part-time. We are full-time, of course, and we do appreciate people who tune into the channel and hope that uh, we hope that it gives you some useful information. And if you like the uh, video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe button down below. That'll help us out. In the meantime, we're going to recover from the things that happened to us that put us into a motel this week and get back on the road. And we'll join you next week if all, everything goes well. In the meantime, you have a great week and enjoy your travels and time on the road. Maybe we'll see you as we travel the highways and byways of this great country.